Good morning, beloveds. Um, it, it so a couple of days ago it was 50 degrees, and today the the wake up temperature was 71, 72. Uh, it was a hot day in the in the park, and we had to get there and get done. So there wasn't a whole lot of time to really play with squirrels and a whole lot of. Uh, but we did. There were they were out. They were out, and um, we also got a couple of blue jays. Uh, I think I've rec I'm starting to recognize their call because right we were this close. I mean, we were within you know the a tenth of a mile of being done, and I heard this sound, and so I was like, I'm pretty sure that's a blue jay, and that is a blue jay telling me off. And um, Tom was a little bit behind me, and so we stopped. Uh, so I stopped, and I was looking. And he's like, "What?" And I was like, "I'm pretty sure there's a blue jay up there yelling at us." And he's like, "Fine." So he threw a peanut, and danged if it wasn't a blue jay up there yelling at us. Um, so uh, they figured th they'll follow us around the park. So it's interesting. Um, and they ask for what they absolutely ask for what they want, because uh, that one was up there, and that one was telling me, "Hey, I haven't gotten a peanut yet. I want one." In no uncertain terms, you could hear it. So I was like, all right. Um, but yeah. And I think we may have seen a one of those red-headed, uh, I want to say it's a woodpecker, but it's this, one of the smaller ones. Uh, I think we may have seen the nest. Um, because we saw one fly up, and then I swear I saw one with another one with its head sticking out of a branch. So, you know. Um, part where... a tree had broken off. So there may be a red-headed woodpecker nest in our um, park, which is really exciting and cool. So that is the benefit of going to the park. You never know what you're going to see. Oh, and the whistling ducks were in the park today. Um, I was going to try and take a picture because I wanted to see them in flight, but I had, they were, the sun was between me and them and it just was not going to be a good shot. So yeah. All right, it is April 24th. Our title is I am an heir to the kingdom and I now dedicate myself to unselfish living. The Bible quote is, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Matthew 6, 12. I live in a universe of divine order. This universe expects me to live in it with wisdom and love and this I do. I know that with the with creative thinking premised upon good, there is no impossibilities for me. I know that God wants me to have all the good that I can mentally appropriate. I now dedicate myself to unselfish living. I forgive myself for all my errors of omission and commission. I let God's healing currents of love cleanse my consciousness. I honestly seek to love my fellow man, for in him God abides. I see him as God sees him. I bless him in thought and action. I release every unkind thought, motive, and feeling from my mind. I take my true place as a spiritual being and let God alone rule and govern my life. I release love to every person, place, and thing. Having forgiven and released the mistakes others have made, I know that my own are equally dismissed. Therefore, all guilt is erased from my mind and all past fear from my heart. I face today with a cleansed mind and a free spirit. No man sits in judgment upon me and I judge no man. I am a free soul in a spiritual universe thinking God's thoughts. Today, I honestly seek to live by the Sermon on the Mount. I will go twice the mile and forgive 70 times 7. I will see the good in my co-workers, my family, my friends. I know that nothing can disturb me unless I let it. And I now close my mind to all evil. God in me is the only presence and the only power. God in me makes every decision and renders every judgment. I love all people and am loved by all. We didn't pull any punches today. <laughs> Which is a good thing. I mean, occasionally I think we need to be reminded. It's like, hey, this is the way it is. This is the way it is. This is the way it is. Um, and 
I like the title. I am heir. I am an heir. I am an heir to the kingdom. And I now dedicate myself to unselfish living. So it's like, Ernest is saying, look, there is a kingdom. You are an heir. You are not the heir. You are an heir. Everyone is an heir to the kingdom. Everyone is an heir to the kingdom. And the goal of the kingdom, the, the, how you get there is to be unselfish. It's like the more people we have in the kingdom, the better the kingdom will be. The more people we have in the kingdom. And I think that's really important to think about. Uh, and it's also a good place to start where when we are looking at our good or we are looking to make a decision and then we go, okay, who does this benefit? And who does it, who could it take away from? And that will tell you whether it's God or ego. Because if it benefits everyone, then it's definitely God. If it benefits a few people and doesn't take away from anybody, we're on pretty solid ground. If it only benefits a few people and it takes away from other people, that's ego. That's ego. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and I also like that they use the original translation of, because I don't know about you, but when I learned the Lord's Prayer, I learned forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But the, the translation that they're using, which is a, a, a more original translation, um, where they went back to the... To, to, to the probably to the Aramaic, um, is forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Um, which gives it a different spin. It gives it a different spin. So, uh, if you go back and read in, I think it's in Deuteronomy, um, they have very, very strong ideas about debts. And charging interest and all of that. So, you know. Uh, I live in a universe of divine order. The universe expects me to live in it with wisdom and love. And this I do. The wisdom expects me. The, the wisdom expects us to live in this universe this, of divine order with wisdom and love. And so my statement is, I do this. Um, do I do it 100% of time? No, no, but the more I practice it, the more I do it. And the more I do it, the more I practice it. And then I'm doing it more than I'm not. So, you know, I'm human, 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 and I'm, and I'm prone to making mistakes. And that's part of what he talks, he talks about in here. It's like, okay, well, you've made a mistake. Now what do you do? Change behavior. Uh, I know that with creative thinking premised upon good, there are no impossibilities about me. So creative thinking premised on good. So it's like, get as creative as you can and focus on the good. There's nothing that's impossible. Any, you can do anything, anything at all. Um, for I know that God wants me to have all the good I can mentally appropriate. And that goes back to the cup of acceptance. How big is your cup of acceptance? I now dedicate myself to unselfish living. It's a big ask, but it shouldn't be. I mean, pretty much all of the faith traditions teach unselfish living. If you get back to the root of them, uh, the root of m almost all the faith traditions... In fact, pretty much everyone that I know about, the 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 root is love, and at, and love is unselfish. Love is unselfish. So I dedicate. I now dedicate. So Ernest is saying we now dedicate ourselves to unselfish living, and it's about practicing it. It doesn't mean we're going to be a hundred percent successful on the and the, from the get go. But the more we practice, and the more we practice without beating ourselves up about it. That's where we will be even more su successful. And I actually think probably a lot of us are very unselfish. We just never thought about it. 
The only time we notice is when we're not, when we are being selfish. It's like, and then we beat ourselves up about that. It's like, yeah, but go back and look at all the times that you've been unselfish, you know? So think about that. Uh, I forgive myself for all my errors of omission and commission. I let God's healing currents of love cleanse my consciousness. So I forgive myself of all of the errors that I've made. And I let God's healing currents cleanse my consciousness. I honestly seek to love my fellow person for in them God abides. I see them as God sees them. And I bless them in thoughts and action. So, I'm forgiving myself. And I'm let, letting God's healing currents cleanse my consciousness. And honestly, the best indication of... Um, I forgot the... What's the opposite word of forgiveness? Not, not, not forgiving. But it's like, when I, when I make a mistake... The best indication that I actually have changed is changed behavior. I can say all the words that I want, but if I'm changing my behavior to not make the mistakes anymore, then that's where God's healing currents are coming in. It's actually changing my behavior from the mistakes that I have made. And then, and that's the changed behavior. I honestly seek to love my fellow person. I honestly seek to love my fellow person because in my in them I see God. God abides in them. I see God as God sees them. God sees them as whole, perfect, love, loving, and complete. That's how God sees them. So that's how I am obligated, if I follow this teaching, to see my fellow person. Is it always possible? Yes. Sometimes it's work. <laughs> Sometimes it's work. Um, and so I bless them in act, in thought and action. And that is, we can do all the kind things that we want, but if we are not being kind in our head to that person, we're not doing, we're not being a hundred percent real. So I bless them in thought. L don't, I would rather not think of them than think evil of them, if that makes sense. It's like, okay, so if, if I've got somebody in my life that I just can't have good thoughts about, then it behooves me to not think about them, to let them go. And it's hard. I admit it, especially if we feel like we've been wronged by them. So you bless them and keep them far away from you. <laughs> it's like you start thinking about that person, you just, and that's, and that's what you can say. I bless you. And may, may God bless you and keep you far away from me. And then move on to something else. All right. I release every unkind thought, motive, and feeling from my mind. That takes practice. I take my true place as a spiritual being and let God alone rule. Another way to say that is I take my true place as a spiritual being and let love alone rule. And let me remind you, love is not a doormat. Okay? There is a divine no. Uh, and so I take my true place as a spiritual being and let God alone rule and govern my life. I release love to every person, place, or thing. Having forgiven and released the mistakes others have made, so I forgive myself and I am forgiving others, I know that my own are equally dismissed. So I know that they talk about forgiving and forgetting. And to a degree, yes, you can forgive and then forget. But when you forgive, if you forgive somebody who is going to continually make those mistakes because they haven't found themselves, then you do not put yourself back into their presence where they can make the mistake again. That's, that's God bless you and keep you far away from me. Okay. So just because you have forgiven them doesn't mean you have to let them back in. But don't let them live rent, rent free in your life, in your, in your head. When you start to think about them, if it hurts, kick them out. God bless you and keep you far away from me. Let me go do something else. Uh, therefore, all guilt is erased from my mind and all past fear from my heart. That's changed behavior. Yes, I have made a mistake. And 
uh, and you learn this from Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, it's like you make amends and you make amends in person unless that will hurt the person more. And then you make the amends and you move on and you let that person be. So that's the changed behavior. So you make amends. You say, I'm sorry. I will not do this again. And I will show you by my changed behavior. But if it is a situation where you cannot do that, then you have to forgive yourself and you have to move on. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Because we can't always ask forgiveness for people that aren't with us any longer. So we have to do it ourselves. And then we have to live up to that forgiveness from ourselves. And sometimes that's harder than living up to the forgiveness that is granted to us by other people. I face today with a cleansed mind and a free spirit. No man sits in judgment upon me and I judge no man. So no person sits in judgment of me because nobody has the right to judge me. And I judge no one because I don't have the right to judge anyone. I don't know their story. I don't know their story. Um, I do have the right to discernment in which I will not put myself into their position, but no one has the right to judge me. And that's very important for me to remember. People can judge me all they like. It doesn't matter to me. So no one can judge me. They can do it, but I don't care. And I will judge no one because I don't have that right. I don't know their story. I don't know all of their story. Um, I am a free soul in a spiritual universe thinking God's thoughts. And God doesn't see the bullshit. Oh, <laughs> sorry. God doesn't see the nonsense. God does not see the nonsense. God only sees the divine spark. God sees the godly. God sees the love. And so that's what I'm going to see. And sometimes I'm going to see it in person and sometimes I'm going to see it from a distance. <laughs> Today, I honestly seek to live by the Sermon on the Mount. I will go twice the mile and forgive 70 times 7. And that's a lot. I will see the good in my co-workers, my family, and my friends. I know that nothing can disturb me unless I let it. And that's what I'm talking about. People can judge me all they like and I don't care. Because I know that nothing can disturb me. Unless I let it. That's the power of a curse, too. You can throw a curse all you want, but unless the person accepts it, curse has no power. So, same thing with judgment. So, I know that nothing can disturb me unless I let it, and I now close my mind to all evil. Remember, evil is a misuse of the law. God is in God in me is the only presence and the only power. God in me makes every decision and renders every judgment. And when I say that, God in me makes every decision and renders every judgment, that means it's going to be done with love. Every decision is going to be made with love. Every every judgment is going to be made with love. And sometimes that means keeping people out and and away. Um, because you are being loving to yourself and loving to your to that person. Um, if your interactions are toxic, then distance is love. I love all people and am loved by all. If I'm willing to see you as a godling, then I'm willing to see that on a divine level, there is love. So I'm willing to love the divine spark and I'm willing to be loved by the divine, divine spark. And if the human part of us, the material part of us can't act like that, that's okay. That's okay. I will love you from a distance. <laughs> I will love you from a distance. So our mission today, should we choose to accept it? Our mission today, should we choose to accept it? And there's a lot in here. But I'm going to go with this one. Our mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to forgive ourselves of all of our errors and omissions. To let God's healing currents of love cleanse our consciousness. Because some days, that's what we need. 
Some days we need to just let it all go. It's like, yes, I have made a mistake. Yes, I have made many mistakes. Yes, there's a possibility I'll make more mistakes. But I'm going to forgive myself today and I'm going to make that effort in love not to do it anymore. And I'm going to let those healing currents clear out whatever it is in me that made those mistakes. And I'm going to focus on the love. That is it. And I am going to, oh, my allergies are driving me crazy. My nose is itching. I'm so sorry. Um, and that's it. That's it. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to try not to sneeze. Um, I am going to encourage you because forgiveness work is, forgiveness work, especially when you are forgiving, working, doing forgiveness of work on yourself. It is extremely important that you that you do loving, kind, and compassionate. Um, that is the whole point of forgiveness work, is to be loving, kind, and compassionate with yourself so that you can be loving, kind, and compassionate with others when you forgive them. So please do something loving, kind, and compassionate for yourself. And forgiving yourself is that. Um, and you can start small. Start small. Start with the little things and work your way up to the big ones. But if you really want to start with a big one, start with a big one. You know? Do what you've got the energy to do with this mission. All right? Um, I would also encourage you, because the sun is out, go get a face full of sun first thing in the morning. Drink some water. And please drink some water. Um, I mean, we're coming into that part of the year that we all drink a whole lot of water because it's, yeah, it's going to be 85 to, today here. Um but please remember that you are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased. Always. That is why those healing currents are available to us. All right? That is why that breath of heaven is available to us. It is to remind us that we do live in heaven now. Uh, it is always around us and it is up to us to see it. And to practice it. And to love it. And to be it. Really. Really. So do something to engage your mind and your body. And please, we got a window to open our windows <laughs> before it gets too warm. But we're going to always open the windows of our soul and allow that breath of heaven to remind us that we do live in heaven now. All right? Do what you need to do to make it a wonderful day. All right? Please. You're a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased and you are loved absolutely loved um it's saturday reverend david should be on facebook live around 5 p.m and i will be back on facebook live at 9 a.m and then we will have an amazing service on facebook live at 11 t on uh, sunday so uh and if you don't catch us facebook live that's fine we don't delete the videos and they are available on youtube later on Sunday. I do post a link though, so if you want to get to that. And these talks are archived on the Running Rev Ryan YouTube channel, so feel free to go check those out too. All right, beloveds, have a wonderful day because it's certainly beautiful out there right now. <laughs>